Welcome to Forgotten Islam. Schools is the essential foundation of education. The reason we need schools is obvious. Schools are what cater or organize education into a systematic order. Essentially, education is our backbone, and without it, the human species would have never evolved their knowledge. Now, education itself was evident for thousands of years, and for the Western world, it started from Plato, who created the first academy of higher learning. However, we cannot say it was a school because it was more of a place for the philosophers to debate in. This leaves us with the question, then who truly founded schools? It was the Muslims. In the Muslim world a thousand years ago, the school was a mosque. This facilitated education and for Muslims seeking knowledge was a must, since it is obligatory on every Muslim man and woman to seek it. Both religion and knowledge were taught to educate the people of the Muslim world. It started with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, teaching his companions about the new religion, its beliefs and understandings of world perspectives. He converted a companion's home into a makeshift school such as Darul Arqam. Thereafter when he migrated to Medina and established the first Islamic state, the first thing he built was a mosque. It was not just a place of worship and religion, but also a place to learn, because Islam is not a religion alone, rather a complete way of life. He sent people who were memorizers or hafid of the Quran to the nomad tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, therefore spreading the earliest form of education in the new Islamic world. These traveling teachers were called Ahl al-Ilm and soon spread across the world not just teaching the Quran, but even after the Prophet Sallallahu death, they taught science, math, geography, philosophy and other key subjects that are taught in today's world. In Palermo, Ibn Hawqal, a 10th century geographer, merchant and traveler, claimed to have counted about 300 elementary teachers, which for that time was very dumbfounding to have. At the time of the Prophet وسلم, in the 7th century, there were 9 mosques or schools if you want to say in Medina. Then in 653 CE, the concept of school was addressed formally and schools started growing in every part of the known world. From there on, the idea of school had been heard from Europe to China. This was the start of the golden age of the Islamic world. In 744 CE, one sprung up in Damascus and then another in the same century was founded in Cordoba and soon enough by the late 9th century, schools for both girls and boys had been set up in the Muslim world and education thrived like never before. Whilst the European and non-Muslim world lived in conflict and confusion, the Muslim world were learning about the sciences and were advancing in every field you could think of. By the 10th century, the education system set up by the Muslims was a blueprint for the advancement of that era. The Seljuks had set up the famous Nizamiya University, which is regarded as the first school that wasn't set up in a mosque and was named after Vizier Nizam al Mulk of Baghdad. The Muslims were setting up foundations for its future generations. In contrast, England was at war with the Normans who had just invaded it in 1066. It showed a clear distinction between a revived world and an extremely declining world. However, unfortunately, we witness the decline of the Muslim world today, which is similar to medieval England. In the next part of this series, we'll learn about Islamic education in detail and the architectural genius of the Muslims. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like, share, subscribe.